<sighs> Anyways, welcome back to another YouTube video. It's been a long day for me. I've been out of town running errands with Ryan for Synthetic, and I happened to go to a comic book shop on the way home, and I actually found some really dope comics. So I thought I would show you guys what I got today, and maybe we'll draw on a few of them. So let's see what we got. <clears throat> so before we get into the comics that I got, I thought I would show you guys a little project that I've been working on. It actually is right behind me. <laughs> so if you guys follow my TikTok, you might have seen a lot of the color work that I've been doing recently. Um, I don't know why I haven't ever gotten to color until now, but it's basically inspired a whole new style. And uh, this is what I've been working on, just, you know, right on my wall because, you know, my studio needs to become less boring and more interesting. So this is just a self-portrait I've been working on. You can see I got a new little clock style here. And you got just different colors mixed in with each other, uh, like any painting. It's pretty abstract. The toughest part for me is layering everything, and there's probably, like... 80 more layers to go before I finish this. This is just the beginning, basically. But I thought that you guys might be interested in seeing what's going on here. If you guys want to see any of the progress I make on this painting, check out my TikTok. Anyways, I think it's about time that we break into these comics. So first off, we got this uh, Shadow Hawk number two comic that I found in the 50 cent bin. The reason why I got this is I just thought it was a really cool cover. I mean, look at that. It like shines really dope you know you open it up and just look at the artwork already the first page gnarly i mean just flipping through this it's pretty dope i mean for 50 cents of course i'm gonna get this i mean look at the artwork there's so much just crazy stuff i mean just look at the line work on that i definitely think this was a pickup for 50 cents i mean just the cover itself is really cool and that's all i really need to pick up a comic book the second comic I got was actually, it's this Dream Love comic for $3 from 1958, number two. There's not really anything special about this comic book, and it's not really worth anything, but I really, really love these old 50s comic books, especially like the Roy Lichtenstein style things. And I was like, dude, three bucks for this? Like, how am I not going to buy this? I mean, and so with this one, I'm thinking instead of keeping this in my personal collection, how about I hand embellish them? Then we got this comic book. There's not really too much to this. Um, it's missing the cover. It was only a dollar, but I just really like the artwork on it with the hot air balloon and stuff. I thought it was a nice piece to flip through for inspiration. And here we have probably one of the grails I got from this Rip, which is true comics number 50 from 1946 for only five bucks so usually when people are comic book collecting they're looking for like specific issues like captain america 111 or you know spider-man number 50 when it comes to golden age comics like this it's really interesting because with silver age and any other you know comics that come after the golden age era you're, you're kind of looking for specific key issues but with these i just love them because the covers look spectacular you're getting a glimpse into an era that just is long gone oh, this is 1946 this is before the war ended one month before the atomic bombs were dropped on nagasaki and hiroshima so i find it really interesting to have a magazine that is still talking about war when world war ii was still going on so that's why i really love this issue and i just love the big words true comics and you got you know the 10 center here but i just thought this was a really dope issue to have i mean come on I can't pass up anything from the World War II era. Now from there, we go into some of the new stuff that I got, like the Superman blank comic variant. I actually got two of them. Really cool because, you know, you could design your own Superman cover, basically. This is something that a lot of comic book artists do, and it's something that I've been doing recently. Here's one, for example, that I did um, for the Joker blank comic cover that I got a few weeks back at another comic shop. This was just a green cover with the Joker title, and then from there, I filled in the entire page with just crazy Jokers everywhere. I plan on doing that to both of these Superman ones, and also this Wonder Woman one that I got. Pretty cool that I just have all these blank covers now where I could just literally make my own cover, spin it in my own direction, my own style. And what I think was the coolest pickup of this trip were these just blank comic books. As you can see, it says here, the blank comic book. This is a completely blank comic book with 24 pages and cardstock covers. Create your masterpiece what so that means i could just draw like an entire comic book just an entire original and release it on the site each page i could illustrate front to back i mean how dope is this i didn't even know this existed so i'm really excited to maybe not get into these ones in this video but maybe we'll try out one of the superman ones or actually i forgot i still have a batman detective flank variant cover that i haven't done anything with so maybe we'll do this one today i don't know I'll figure it out. Now it's time for me to make my decision of what I'm going to be drawing on in this video. But you'll find out what I'm drawing in this next clip.
So I finally decided on two comic books that I'm gonna try today, and that is gonna be the Dream Love comic, which I'm gonna hand embellish, and then I'm gonna also do the Batman Detective comic with pen and ink. Um, I got a couple ideas for this one, and I got like one idea for this one, but we have to figure out the rest while we're working on it. So let's get to it. First little piano break. <laughs> Let's get to it, actually, this time. Sorry. With this Dream Love comic, I wanted to add subtle details instead of filling up the entire cover with craziness. I already loved the layout of the cover, and I thought just by adding a little bit instead of a lot, I could make it more interesting. I remembered a particular scene from the movie Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, where the two main characters took psychedelics in a casino, and all of the people around them started turning into reptilian creatures, indulging in their sexual pleasures. I like the idea of exaggerating hedonistic desires in a creature-like manner, using that to personify the two characters on the cover. In the background, I added my signature alarm alarm clock face to the poor man in the back, almost like the innocent victim in this scenario discovering the true nature of the main characters. What I find interesting about comic books like this one is certain issues can be particularly cheap. Many of these comic companies which existed in the 40s and 50s got phased out as comics were seen as a bad influence on kids during the post-World War II era. What can make a comic book high value is first appearances of culturally influential characters, such as Superman or Spider-Man, or just being the first issue in a series, even if it's not a known comic series. There are many other reasons why a comic book can be valuable, but with this issue it doesn't really meet any of the requirements to be of much value. This comic series, Dream of Love, along with many others have been mostly forgotten with time as the cultures continue to move in different directions away from the style. But luckily something like this is still recognizable due to the pop art movement which picked up as these comics were slowing down. This was the first time I had ever hand embellished a comic book this old, and I was a little nervous because I didn't want to make it look worse than it was previously. Using my Posca markers, I was able to add vibrant colors to match the cover. I also used a Faber-Castell brush pen to put in the line work. The combination of these two drawing utensils made it look as if my work was a part of the original comic. And out of all the comics I've done, I think this one would have to be my favorite, and I hope to find more comics like this in the future because I'd love to do a whole collection. This comic ended up being sold as part of our Black Friday sale a few months back, but for those who missed out, you're in luck, because this is now available as its own signed and numbered Synthetic Love comic cover print on Synthetic.shop. Alright guys, so it is now the next day. I finished that hand embellished comic book last night, um, and before we get to the Batman comic book, uh, I gotta take out some mail. It's time to send out your guys' orders, so we're gonna do that first, and then we'll get to the comic. Alright, so we are now on to the Batman comic. Honestly, with this one, I haven't drawn Batman in like three, four years, so I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. So this could either be great, or this could be a complete failure. No idea. But let's get to it! <laughs> Now with this comic, I decided to take this one in the same direction as my Joker comic book I did a week earlier. Back when I was in middle school, my goal was to work for Marvel or DC one day, so I drew superheroes on a daily basis. I was heavily inspired by many comic book artists, one being the famous illustrator Jim Lee. One of my first comics that I had ever received was an old X-Men comic done by Jim Lee, which was done in 1990, but afterwards he went on to illustrate some of the coolest Batman covers in existence. He inspired me to draw Batman during my middle school years. If I were to guess, I probably have drawn over 1,000 Batmans on notebook paper, worksheets, and comic book boards during that time. When I started drawing this, I was really confident in my abilities to draw Batman, but very quickly I realized I was rusty. I had to resort to glancing at a picture of Batman to get the key details down that I felt I was missing. Then just like that, everything clicked for me, and I was able to illustrate Batman again. Batman is perceived in many different ways to people all across Gotham. Each variation of Batman that I drew reveals a different perception someone has of him. Some people may view him as a monster, some as a hero, and many believe him to be everything in between. It must be tough when no one actually knows who you are, but they project a completely skewed and exaggerated version of their fear or fantasy onto your character. I sometimes feel like the perception that people hold of me can be too high compared to who I am, or they completely miss a point. However, I've learned it's always important to stay true to who you are and to not have others' opinions weigh you down. In all reality, I think most people think of themselves more than anyone else, so obsessively worrying about what others think of you is probably a lost cause in my opinion, but that's still something that I struggle with. 
At the top of the comic, I wrote Batman is blank statements, such as Batman is bad, Batman is God, Batman is emo, Batman is Santa, and so on and so forth. I did this to hone in on all the different perceptions people have of Batman. Also, you guys might have noticed recently that I've been including a lot of words in my artwork. Including words is something that I've picked up recently. Though I do write about specific things once in a while, I usually use it to show that the thoughts are there. It doesn't reveal the meaning of the overall piece as much as it just adds to it. But now that this piece is finished, I think it makes for a good duo with my Joker comic that I did. Pretty awesome if you ask me. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I apologize for not posting for a while, but I plan for this video to be the start of consistent content on this channel. If you're interested in supporting my work, consider checking out synthetic.shop where you could find apparel, prints, and accessories. I also have an original artwork shop as well. Check out my Instagram if you want to see my completed works, and for more video content, follow me on TikTok. You can find the link to all of these things in the description below. Thank you. Because you're getting a flashback, because you're getting a flash, and the comics I'm trying today.